Miss Lupi Yao Yao Qingzhao. She has over 15 years of experience in design and manager work in fashion industry. She is now leading the Chinese content team as the trend director of WGS and China. She has been directing the team studying local trends in retail and the fashion industry for a long time, providing professional trend guidance for different industries. She provided consulting services for a variety of companies, including Disney, Covestro, Adidas, Alibaba, Hire, Huawei, Li Ning, and so on. Before joining WGSN, she had been invited to exhibit her design works at the Royal, Royal V&A Museum and a British Pioneer Saddler's Well Theater and had been interviewed by many mainstream media organizations. Today, Ms. Lu Pi Yao will tell us about uh, the system of values for the Z generation and also their priorities on eco uh, protections. Ms. Lu Pi Yao, please. Okay, please allow me to share my screen. No problem. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Well, there might be a little bit of delay in switching the slides. Just let me know if you see that. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Yao Qingzhao, Lu Pi Yao. Today, I would like to tell, tell you about the sense of values and environmental protection priorities for the Z generation. When we study the consumers, we would look at their system of values or their sense of values because that would uh, affect uh, their all sorts of choices, their lifestyles, their preference for fashion, the way, the attitudes, the actions they have over a lot of things. And for the Z generation consumers, we took a really long time to study them because they have a big population. Globally, it had already reached 1.8 billion and many retailers are paying attention to this focal group, Z generation. They inhibited the environmental protection awareness and the social responsibility from the previous generation. So their sense of values is what we care about. It's also a part of their lives. So in terms of their sense of values, I have six aspects to talk about today. The first thing we've noticed that is they have less loyalty for brands. Many brand owners, they wish their consumers have very strong loyalty for them so that uh, it would be easier for the brands to do business operation. But, well, unfortunately, the Z generation has less loyalty for certain brands. They wouldn't care if you're a very famous brand and they definitely wouldn't buy would buy from you. That's not true. In many cases, they care more about whether the system value of a brand matches up uh, with their own. So if the company cannot show them that they are actually in match with each other in terms of the sense of values, they are more likely to sway or even leave the brands to choose other, uh, choose from other competitors which fit into their system of values more. So for the enterprises and the brands, a very key factor they would have to consider is that how to uh, uh, understand the Z generation sense of values. That's supposed to be the first step and then build their, uh, the company's sense of values and, uh, in order to come closer to those Z generation, in order to have that echoing sentiment in between the brand and the Z generation consumers to have a longer term, more sustainable trust from those Z generations. Second sense we found is that uh, these people very much care about environmental protection and the sustainability. Unlike the previous generation, they don't think this is something far out of reach, just a conceptual thing. They believe it's something about very detailed life choices. They could do it more than just being politically correct. They would go to parks to pick up garbage or participate in those activities or even organize public welfare activities and events to really participate and devote into these courses. And this is how made uh, what made this generation different from previous generations. They've been doing this, also hoping to feel happy and also show their own value as a human being and show their care for the society.
The third characteristic about the Z generation is that uh, they are always trying to find the small blessings within life in the details. Now people have faster pace and rhythm in life, but these Z generation consumers, they pay attention to their own feelings. They are not like the previous generation, always on a uh, hustle, trying to earn money to feed the family place, uh, bread on the tables, but they would care more about their own feelings in daily lives, would like to slow down from time to time, especially now that after COVID, uh, yet the uh, pandemic controls, restrictions have been lifted, but the terror, the uh, fear, the anxiety and exhaustion, that kind of emotions and sentiments still linger. That's why they care for themselves from the bottom of their heart about their own happiness and their well-being. These are their sentimental directions they would like to go toward. So from the details of their daily lives, the Z generation would like to slow down, look for the smaller blessings and achieve uh, those happiness moments. For example, they sit down together to boil tea and enjoy it. And you can see that you don't have many luxury things in that picture, just some nuts and fruits and a pot of tea, a very simple things. But once once you get to sit down together with your friends, that you can talk and sit down together to enjoy that moment. That's what they call a small blessings, even just for a temporary short term. For the post the 70s, post the 80s, you wouldn't find that very attractive. But for the younger generation, this is what they are in pursuit of. They enjoy that happiness. And they it's quite important for them. Next is that uh, they uh, have uh, been holding on to the principle that personality matters the most and have a very strong sense of nation pride because they grew up in a time, especially for the Chinese Z generation, which is more prevalent. They have a stronger sense of national pride because they grew up when China had been a strong country. And when they buy Chinese products, they truly, genuinely love those and are proud of those products. And they want more personality. Well, this applies to all Z generation across the globe. They were willing to pay that premium for products that they need or they are interested in. And if they could enjoy further customization services, they would also fund those uh, in favor because it fits into their pursuit for personality. Well, on the right side, this picture, you may think it's a little bit uh, a cliche, but that's actually from uh, a Malaysian new designer generation a product. They basically have been making Spring Festival related capsules, and some of those elements are inspired by traditional Chinese characteristics. You may see that this is, has been very funny and cliche picture. Uh, those things are probably going to be used by the older generation, the parents. However, it has now become a subculture that youngsters would find it uh, funny, and they even put it into uh, services and a products because it simply matches with their principle of personality matters the most. They look for fun in those activities. The fifth uh, topic I'd like to touch upon is that they have been shrewd in budgeting. Just now I said they would like to pay a premium for products they are uh, interested in or they really like. And here I say they are shrewd in budgeting. So are they actually contradictory to each other, these two notions? Well, the fact is that uh, they're not contradictory because they had grown up in an era of the internet and they're not stupid when buying things, even if they are willing to pay that premium for things that they really like and need. Before they buy anything, they would go to offline stores to experience, to compare the price from multiple online channels, read the details, or even analyze the parameters of the products, fully understand the product before making a final purchase decision. So uh, from this perspective, you can say that the Z generation are willing to pay for the premium, but also have been very shrewd in budgeting. They are much difficult to fool especially at the post-pandemic global political and economic situation, 
the Z generation and other consumers have all been even more shrewd, more thrifting than before, which is also another global trend, as we have observed. We have also been seeing that online, they would also would like to show how they save up, how they、uh, do the savings and how they plan for those、uh, financing and the wealth management, sometimes even have a daily record of that. And you can see that、uh, they would also publish、uh, vlogs. On how to buy cheaper things, to do more things, as well as to save up. So, from all these detailed aspects, you can see that the Z generation had been a very shrewd budgeting group of consumers. The sixth topic I want to touch upon is that they are more willing to escape from reality from time to time than other generations. Other generations would also do that. But the Z generation do it more than others. That's why they would like to、uh, indulge in games and even gain more spiritual and、uh, emotional、uh, satisfactions from virtual world. So those six aspects were the sense of values for the Z generation. And now in my part two, I'd like to talk about their environmental protection priorities. Just now, as I said. They are a generation which really focus, really value environmental protection and the sustainability. They do no longer believe it's a concept far out of reach, nor just the politically correct things. It's very detailed, urgent life choices they'd have to make and take actions upon. Uh, which is also why many enterprises have moved、uh, environmental protection further up on their agenda. And、uh, on the first point, I'd like to touch upon here is to go against the greenwashing. But what is greenwashing? What is the definition of that? Greenwashing means when an organization has been boasting about their actions related to environmental protection, environmental protection awareness, or、uh, edges in those regards. Because they believe that consumers care for this, so they just talk about it instead of actually been doing such things. So that's an action of greenwashing, as we name for those actions for the green、uh, for for those organizations. Sometimes they wouldn't believe that it's going to cause、uh, negative impacts. They believe that、uh, the consumers wouldn't be able to discover. Uh, the reality, nor that they are actually、uh, knowing that much details about the things they've been boasting about. However, that is no longer true when it comes to the Z generation. So, if they didn't do something and they claim that they had done it, they would lose the trust from consumers, and that's how greenwashing would do negatively for the enterprises and companies. Shouldn't do that. So, no greenwashing anymore. Do real things. To benefit the environment, and how should we ever actually do that? So here we have a few suggestions. More consumers now have that preference for environmental protection, and the attitudes got more prevalent as well. However, the companies are taking more serious actions of greenwashing. So the first thing they need to do is to stop it, and then do real environmental protection-related activities and works, and then take. Uh, the, uh, leverage those action advertisements to do the publicity、uh, promotion for them, and also、uh, keep on to their promises and fulfillment of their uh, environmental uh, commitments in order to avoid losing the trust from consumers and try to regain the trust from them and maintain. Total transparency, instead of disappointing them again and again, and fully lost their trust. Publicity's purpose is to promote the sales, but it has to fit with the reality, the facts. Consumers care about that, so that's a way to regain their trust. The second point is about environmental protection-related innovations. If we really rely on publicity, that's just、uh, something on a paper, and we need real actions. We've been paying attention to some of the latest innovations. 
emissions globally. And here we have something worth sharing, which is turn wasted air into fabrics. In this regard, we can see that when compared with, with 2010, the whole world would have to cut almost half by carbon dioxide emission by 2030 in order to avoid the direst consequences of climate change. Carbon dioxide's concentration in our air has already reached its historical high. The product we get in contact with every day also bears carbon dioxide within them. But on the other hand, though, emission of carbon dioxide is uh, having some quite negative influences. But on the contrary, it could also be used in some positive ways. It could help to increase the strength and the durability of plastics and uh, concrete. It could also help the textile industry to wean from unprocessed oil-based fiber. Fashion industry, as we previously have just learned, is also an uh, environmental non-friendly industry. And by taking these measures and the new technologies, we could also turn this industry greener. Here's another technology I'd like to talk about, carbon capturing technology. According to to the IPCC, uh, if we want to reach or maintain a global temperature rise within two degrees, according to the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, carbon capturing technology will play a vital role. According to estimation of the UN, the fashion industry's carbon emission has accounted for global emissions 8 to 10 percent, while other agencies estimated the number to be in between 2 to 8 percent. But no matter which is correct, we'd have to pay attention to the fashion industry's carbon emission. On the right side, you see a picture. A company which is very much leading in environmental protection technologies, which would like to turn industrial wasted air into materials to benefit many industries. In carbon capturing technology, we can see that with the deepening development of such technologies, some companies have successfully developed such technologies to turn uh, the carbon dioxide oxide from our air, capture them, process them, and use bioscience technologies and green chemical processes, turn them into low carbon materials that could be further utilized in other uh, application scenarios. And here we can see a few of those examples. Lululemon is uh, a brand we all know about. So this have worked together with that company I just mentioned, which is named Lens Attack, together with the IGL India Glycose Limited and a Taiwan company FENC to develop ethanol-based polyester and use that in sportswear for a female. And this is how carbon capturing technology can be really put into real products. Another example is the Zara's example. We know that those fast fashion industries have strong pollutions. And now that Zara has been taking some measures to turn towards greener operations, they launched this party dress capsule series, which contains 20% of the fabric to be uh, made from uh, industrial wastes, MEG and PTA. And also on the right side, you see that uh, uh, Swiss footwear brand on running. They indicate that, that they have already built the first sports shoe sole made from carbon dioxide emissions. And obviously the sports brands in fashion industry are more advanced and have stronger awareness for such new technologies and would like to really apply those into their products. And apart from those, the third part I'd like to talk about is that sustainable fashion is something we can all contribute to, little by little. Previously, those were about technologies. And here, I'd like to talk about what we can do as individuals or smaller companies or all kinds of brands who uh, all have a say in this, who can take some actions, make our due contributions. The brands I've listed here on the screen, some are from China, some are from overseas, but they are, have all been doing things related to uh, environmental protection. For example, Chou Chu Ting and uh, Shi Yu. They've been using those leftover materials or uh, recycled products and turn them into new dresses and clothes. 
in order to promote their uh, philosophy of sustainable fashion. I have two more detailed examples to share with you. The first one is Chan Chit Lo. We've interviewed its founder, Venice Lo. She told us that uh, it had used uh, more sustainable products, environmental friendly, and she believed that uh, whether a product can be called a luxury depends on how much time we're put into making it instead of uh, determined by whether there have been luxuries or expensive materials used. And she also says something that really uh, touched us. One man's garbage could be the wealth of another man. This series you see on the screen on the left side is named the Mother of the Ocean because when they visited Jeju Island in Korea, uh, there had been females who always dive into the bottom of the ocean to harvest uh, uh, oceanic products and seafoods, and they were called those ocean females or ocean women. And this series of uh, clothes were inspired by that occupation, which also have incorporated many uh, environmental protection awareness because it uses those uh, recycled or refabricated materials and fabrics, leftover bits or even leftover silks and steel wires to uh, adhere to their commitment to environmental protection. And this is another example recode uh, under the umbrella of Kolon Group in Korea. And they also have a very strong creativity. We all know about Kolon Group in Korea, but every year they, because if it's a big product, a big group, every year their leftover fabrics is of a very large quantity and they do not wish to burn those leftover fabrics because it's not eco-friendly, but they have no better way to deal with it. So they set up a new brand, Recode, and their tasks assigned is that they have to use those leftover fabrics, turn them into products that can be commercially turned into revenues. So that's within the DNA of this brand. They would use uh, all kinds of leftover, uh, out-of-season pieces and the discarded fabrics from the warehouse and hire professional designers and craftsmen to work together and use their imagination to make fashion that made more sense. They started with their uh, out-of-season and uh, in-stock leftovers, but now they have uh, expanded. They even search and procure other leftover bits and the fabrics, uh, even the uh, safety capsules from uh, uh, automotives industries after the cars were dismantled um, and made them into laptop cases or other bags. And they've been establishing workshops and studios and uh, been given lectures to promote that awareness of environmental protection and have been inviting uh, consumers to join. The leaders or the, the teachers in those studios and the workshops would uh, guide the consumers to do DIYs with those leftover bits and fabrics, and uh, they're eligible to take those products away afterwards. And these are all actions that they've been doing, which we can take reference from. So that is all from my perspective. Thank you very much for listening.